Oh. You asking me a question? Yeah, I'm asking you a question. Should I take it out the market? Uh, no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have it on all day. <laughs> and now you can't see it. Hey, when's the next time I should come back? I'll see you in two days. No, you're not gonna be done in two days. <laughs> hey, what's happening, everyone? All right, so I'm gonna head over to my buddy Abraham's shop today to check out the status on that 996 Porsche Tesla swap. Uh, just to do an update to see where he's at on that. If you haven't seen that video, uh, I'll link it somewhere over here. Uh, second, I've been following them on social and looks like him and his daughter are working on a project together. A Mark 1 Golf um, EV swap. So that kind of hits home to me and that's something that's pretty cool because I'm a Volkswagen guy originally. And dude, to find just some, a clean Mark 1 shell is like impossible. Forget about the EV swap. Anyways, uh, let's head over and see what's going on there. What are you working on? This is called a, a rabbit. 1982. It was an old diesel when it started his life. And we're gonna convert it to electric. I'm gonna take the technology to a different stage. Bring it to the 21st century. But actually we're gonna pull the motor. So let's get some help from Robin. I had this car about four years in the shop. Mm -hmm. And my daughter was uh, a couple years younger than obviously. And she fell in love with it. And she likes the old look, and uh, I gave it to her. So we're gonna build it together. Sweet dude, she's over there. <laughs> Hi. So she's actually putting time, like actually putting in her work, you know? Yeah. So I'm gonna. We basically took all the wires out of the car because of the age. Yep. We just want to change everything to something newer. Run the car all new with a, you know like a, a more modern harness from a Volkswagen. We'll put all Volkswagen parts back in at least, you know. But because we're going electric, I mean, there's no fuel lines in this car already. Cause I was gonna make it like a, a little track demon, but I just don't see the, the sense of it anymore, right? Yep. I have that many Porsches I need to drive on the track. <laughs> I think this is, this is more enjoyable, you know? Just take it out and just take a run down the street. You know, Sunday morning coffee run, whatever, you know? How much is the Mark I Rabbit Road? Ah. Or oh, this one, sorry. Now that it's kind of stripped and everything. If I had to weigh it in, yeah. in pounds, I would think probably 1,700. Oh, like as a, as a full car, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, I think they only were like 19 to 2,100 pounds. I know the Volkswagen guys will scream at me because I don't know, but it's a, it's a lightweight car and on top of it, it's just, uh, you know, it's like iconic. I don't like the, I don't like the, the paint styles too much. We're going to try to do maybe like a, a minty green or like an olive green color. Cool. Yeah. I'm kind of up and down on which motor to use. I found a DC motor that will fit into it. Yeah. Um, you know, running off like 72 volts. The issue with that is I think I want to go a little more advanced and use like with the regen and all that yep. little stuff, you know, a little more display and stuff, you know, a little more high tech. I okay. think so, right? And you, we have the other stuff. We might as well take advantage of it. Back in the day, both and stuff, right? Huge. Back in the day, 1.8T, this was like gold. This yeah. is gold. Yeah, this was actually um, a track car. Really? The, the engine came off a guy that was running some track. I don't know. It's supposed to be built like 300 horsepower. And it had a, a big top mount intercooler, um, turbo. And it just, I didn't want to cut the chassis of the car just to make it fit in. I didn't see the logics on that, you know? Yeah. So I was going to put back a stock KL4 or something and just make it real simple. This car is missing so much stuff already. It'd just be so easy just to convert to electric now. It's always some kind of fun. Pass Tesla, project fun, rabbit fun, bikey fun. Just like that. Run, one, just two, like three, that. back. Go to the bottom, bend down, man. Yeah, I'm holding from the bottom so you can't pin right. my hands. Let's, let's do it. Happy? Up, up, up. Happy? Yeah! To make it real quick and ugly, 
we're basically waiting for a lot of uh, little wires and connectors and sensors. And because they're not here right now, because of COVID and everything else, and the delivery time is all backed up, we basically spent some time just repainting and like, cleaning up everything that we did. Uh, we ran the new high voltage wires to the rear. I don't know if you can see it from here. Mm -hmm. You go down the tunnel. I almost tripped on that thing. This is where that big fuel pump was, where you took it out to make space. And then we'll put the fuel pump back in, hopefully in the next week or so. We ran um, some plumbing for the vacuum for the for the vacuum pump. Uh -huh. So we're actually waiting for a sensor for that, so it can turn off when it hits uh, 20 inches of vacuum. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, let's see. This is the rest of the high voltage wire. This is out of our 50 foot, so we still have yeah, a good amount actually. Yeah. But we still got to do daisy chaining and, and going to the battery box and whatever else. I think we'll have probably five or ten feet to sell after. Um, and on the front here, I mean, it's just more painting. We ran the harness and actually installed it. I don't know if this was... Was this installed last time? Probably not, right? No, it wasn't installed Yeah, so I'll show you what it looks like inside the car a little bit more. Cool. Um, I mean, it's, it's a kind of a going forward and then two steps back, you know? It's not the best way to do it, but I think anything that we... It's a learning process too, right? So... I don't do a lot of these things, and I'm learning as I go. I'm a, I'm a grease monkey first. <laughs> Yeah, so this is coming off the, the back of the the Tesla here. And this is the feed. And then it goes through the inverter to cool down the inverter in the gears. And then it comes back out and then feeds the rest of the piping. And I, I took a little tap from here and from here to feed all the battery packs. Should work well. It looks good though, man. Yeah, I it know, looks this, so good. This race stuff is just so unnecessary. Yeah. It's made for like, you know, 300 PSI or 500 PSI or something like that. I'm never going to see anything close to that. <laughs> but I think if you're going to do it, do it once, you know? There's yeah. no reason for him to ever go in here and play and, and adjust. And uh, a little more fancy than he needs, but if he wants to show the car or something, at least, yeah, you can see how nice it looks after. Yeah. And then here. Uh -huh. And then it's going to go through my, uh, uh, my contactor box. Mm -hmm. And these are the two ones that feed the Tesla. This is the original Tesla wires. We had to cut the ends off. We still got to trim it, but I just wanted to get up in the hole anyway, and at least we know where everything's living. So now we just, we did a final coat. We're actually ready to put these values back in. Heeny, meeny, miny. Come on, where's the hole? There it goes. There, look, that's what it looks like. Wow. Power. And then you drive. Three packs go in there, right? <laughs> uh, two packs, packs, two packs. Pack of two, yeah. pack of seven. Sorry, Robert. All the batteries will be living under this, this top plate, okay? Okay. This is just so I can see, visualize it. Yeah, so it, it is tight, it's tight. I knew it would be tight. Oh, it is tight. Yeah. So the, this is obviously under this yep. from the bottom up. And I'm, I'm just wondering, like, is this really not going to give me enough room to do anything? So if we're trying to fill coolant here, I don't want to be pouring so, water over these battery packs. You know, that's crazy. Agreed. I think this should just be all dry down there. Like, take that water. Like, even under the, the battery tray, you know, it, the gas tank, there's a big cavity there. Mm -hmm. I could easily, you know, steal space out of it. I don't want to fill gas underneath there or fill water in there, but maybe I could, you know? When this battery comes out, there's a big hole in there anyway. Where the... Yeah, we'll do something. Here, take it off. Oh, yes, shit. Is that it? Is it all? So this is where the factory um, fuel tank was. And this is where you get access to change the fuel pump without taking the whole tank apart. Uh, so okay. there's a lot of space here. I think I'd rather fill water through here. Yeah. And the plate goes on there and it seals it off. And I mean, when you fill coolant here, there's no reason to be touching it or looking at it. That's right. Unless it's, there's no, it's not consumable. It shouldn't be, you know, washing away or nothing. And then we were thinking just in case something happened and Kevin can't stop the car because the gas is just, you know, whatever. We don't know, right? Yep. So I know a lot of guys have like these stop switches where they can hit the power and kill maybe the computer or like kill the power from the 400. Yep. We have something called an inertia switch. So if he has an accident, it should hit the certain, a certain amount of G's will knock off the sensor and it will probably kill the power to the motor or the capacitors or something, you know? 
Oh, smart. Yeah. Something like that's as a, as a safety thing. Cause yeah. We never thought about it when we're going into it and we thought, oh, what happens if there is an accident and all of a sudden it's stuck on full power? Not that it should happen because it's, you know, there's a computer mm -hmm. talking to everything else, right? That's right. But anything can happen. So that ignition switch should, uh, as I say, take the G, take power from the capacitors, and it should turn off the 400 volts. You know, he could probably pull the handbrakes and use the brakes to do the rest of stopping. Mm -hmm. Or worst case, you know, he's, he's passed out and at least the car's not, you know, driving on itself into a wall or something crazy. That's smart. A little scary to think about it, but you know, anything's possible, have to, right? Yeah, you That's have to think still about it, for You sure. know, because I'll be responsible if something happened to him. So I'm overkilling everything I can think of, you know? Yeah. I mean, I wish I could just put a big stop button, but you know, who wants to... We can't... If the batteries are all one place, going to the back, it'd be a different story. We could hit a one breaker and kill everything to the, to the motor. Yeah. But because we have, you know, two packs, so a 120 in the front, I'm not good at math, but whatever in the back... Yeah. That's a lie. <laughs> I'm good at math, but I can't think what's in the back. Our total voltage of, this, of those battery packs, because we're missing two, is 350 volts. So, take off the 120 and two something is in the back. It's still going to be always live. But um, the Tesla won't work under 250 volts, so I think if the one gets cut, yeah. it's not too bad, right? At least the Tesla goes to sleep. That's right. <clears throat> a charger. It has a, a basically a plate on it, just to cool off a motor. It's nice and scratched up, huh? I guess gonna <laughs> push that up. That's what happens when you move stuff around every day. Eh? Coolant just goes in and out, and this is what's feeding the batteries too, right? So we're using the same system. And, and this is who's that for? Emma's car? No, this is for uh, Kevin's car. But Emma's gonna get the same system. But I'm probably gonna do it air cooled. Yeah, you see this car's getting. Ooh, that's tight. It's gonna get tight, yeah. Maybe that's where it is, Levin. So, uh, I'm gonna feed power here, uh -huh. and it's gonna go straight into this box. And then the 400 volts goes into this. And it'll feed these, and then through the car into the back, and feed the rest of them. This is the DC-DC charger. This is basically the replacing the alternator in the car. Oh. Yeah, a nice and simple thing. They get the trigger on and basically 400 volts feed it mm -hmm. and then 12 volts come out. The ground is actually not necessary, but you know, I'm an overkill guy. I'm going to put a ground on it just in case. And it's air-cooled. And as it's running, it'll, it'll supply voltage to the battery to keep the battery voltage up, right? So and uh, 400 volts feed this, 400 volts feed this, and it lives right here. And then the, the 8 gauge is going back to the 5 feet battery. He went from like so much space to like, oh yeah, it's he, all business now. He lost the whole truck. Wow. He's going to open it and see electronics, um, a battery. I'm trying to give him back some seats, honestly. I want to keep the car a car still, right? I don't yeah. want to, you know, when we first thought about the project, we were going to put all the batteries in the back and like just take his whole back seat out. Yeah. And um, guys are telling me if the batteries get too hot, they might explode. You know, not knowing the stuff, obviously, <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't want a battery in the cabin and it pops on them or something crazy. So I'm so happy that we actually put the batteries behind the firewall and in front, you know? Yeah. If something bad happens, you know, I told him, jump out the window. Don't keep your seatbelt on. <laughs> <laughs> it's COVID and, and everybody's taking uh, super long on delivery. Oh, so, is it? Yeah, that's how it is. Because, you know, for those contactors, the guys tell me maybe March. Obviously, we're end of January. Oh, wow. Yeah. I know I was supposed to see you like a month ago, but you know, yeah. I wanted to give you more information. I can't just show you the same thing that you yeah. saw before. We are, we're working on it constantly. Uh, every day we just, we go somewhere forward and as I was saying, two steps back. So there'll be a point where there's no backing and it'll just be on the road. I'm at the point of putting, when I put the weight up back on it, I'm going to roll it out mm -hmm. and I'm going to actually go inside the car and put all the 12 volt stuff in. So most likely when you come back, we could be actually talking to the computer and like turning it on. Cool. Yeah. Because it needs 12 volts. It doesn't need 400 to wake up, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm going to start putting back the interior some bit. I mean, there's no seats in the car and probably to the wash anyway. Get some of the dust off it. 